Today, we have a pretty special video about this PowerBook G4. We'll be doing some software installations, we'll be dual booting the machine, and we'll just be talking about it in general. So be sure to stick around for that, as we have a lot of cool stuff coming up. Before we do anything to the machine, why don't we power it on and check it out? This will be powered off its own internal battery, which actually does still hold a charge. I've got the power brick right here, and it does work, as well as the battery, so we will have to plug it in while we are doing some installations later on, and also just give it a charge. And I actually do have another battery for this specific model, which also does work. And I will move the camera so you guys can actually get a better view of the screen. Okay, so I powered on the machine, and it is being charged, but if I unplug it right now, it will stay on. So we'll leave it plugged in because we will need the extra juice for the installations. Let's take a quick look at this actual machine. So it's a 1.33 gigahertz G4 processor with 768 megabytes of DDR RAM. I would eventually like to upgrade the RAM, but it's not really essential since macOS runs just fine and this is running on Leopard, but upgrades are definitely something I'd like to do in the future. And this is actually running on a PADA drive. It's similar to an IDE type of connector, so it's not exactly blazing fast, but it actually does run pretty nicely on this PowerBook. So as for software, there isn't that much installed. I do have 10.4 Fox, which has probably been updated several times since the last time I actually installed it. So that won't really be a concern for reinstallation purposes. I also do have GarageBand iPhoto, iMovie, and pretty much everything that came in the iLife suite because I actually also have the iLife disc. This is the 2005 version and it comes with iPhoto 5, iMovie HD, iDVD 5, GarageBand 2, and iTunes 4.7. And fortunately for us, Apple still does support the macOS software servers for Leopard. For other software, there's G4 fan control, which is pretty nice to have, not essential, but it can definitely help out with the cooling. And I also did test out 10.5 tube, and that actually runs pretty nicely for this G4 processor. It's not perfect, but it actually does work decently well. And here's that padded drive I was talking about. It's a 60 gigabyte model, and we will be reinstalling Leopard on here, and I will be partitioning this so that way it's a 30 gigabyte partition per installation. We will reinstall macOS Leopard and we will install macOS Tiger. Now Tiger is gonna be in a different video because I want to actually do it on this PowerBook itself with the fresh installation of Leopard and updates software. That'll definitely come after we reinstall Leopard. But for now, we'll just finish taking a look at that and then actually reinstall Leopard. That's pretty much it for the machine. The iTunes installation does have some songs on here, and that was mainly just testing out with an iPod to see how it transfers with USB and Firewire. So those aren't really that big of an issue because I don't need them on this machine since I would prefer this machine to be more for software or for games. iTunes is definitely nice to have, but music would be more of a dedicated Mac for those types of files. Let's actually put in the Leopard disc and there will be a lot of DVD crunchy noises. And the installer is gonna pop up, but we will restart the machine so that way we can launch directly from the installer to partition it with disk utility. Since I don't wanna do anything with the installation, I'd rather just reinstall everything. There's also optional installs and some instructions, and before we actually reinstall macOS, let's actually look at those. Now, optional installs mainly has Xcode, so for applications, we get all of this fancy stuff, including uh, Safari, the dictionaries, Mail, iTunes, iChat, iCal, address book, X11, so you could also install printer drivers, you can also install the language translations, which we will not be doing because that'll just take up more space on the hard drive. We could potentially install some of these drivers, 
but that would probably be for a time where we are actually messing around with some printers so we could always return to that iPod support is also pretty nice to have but with the updates that would probably be featured within iTunes itself but that's it for the DVD or at least the optional installs we'll say goodbye to this copy of Mac OS Leopard and reinstall it so let's restart the machine and when it restarts we'll want to hold down the option key and this is exactly what we want to see so we've got this menu here for the hard drive and then we also have the install DVD so we want to go to the DVD itself and now let's reinstall Mac OS for some reason it's wanting me to power on the Mighty Mouse I believe I had this connected to the power book so it might be looking for some sort of mouse but we'll power it on anyways let's actually begin the installation so this is the part where we want to actually access disk utility we got some more crunchy DVD noises so here is our hard drive we are going to first of all erase it okay so now we want to partition this and we'll set it to two partitions they'll be equal size because we might as well do that for both installations it'll be almost 30 gigabytes for each copy and for the first one Leopard is going to be the main OS Tiger will be the secondary so I never said the installation was going to be perfect and we're going to be using this keyboard again which we actually use to play GTA on a Dell so Mac OS Leopard for the first one and that's an X Mac OS 10 or Mac OS Leopard I'll leave it as 10 and now Mac OS 10 Tiger that'll be saved for the future since today we're going to be doing the installation on the Leopard copy so let's apply that and partition it and it is Mac OS extended journaled so now we have two hard drives well it's just one but two partitions all right, now that we actually have that done, we can exit out of Disk Utility, select Leopard. I'm not entirely sure, but I think the PowerBook is frozen somehow, which is definitely what you want to have when you install an operating system. So this time, Trackpad is working again. It did erase the hard drive, so at least it did that. Back at the installer screen, and it actually does work. So we won't have to use the Mighty Mouse right now. And let's actually continue with the installation again. Of course, agree. Select our Leopard installation and continue. Install. So we got some nice crunchy DVD noises and it's installing on the Mac OS Leopard partition. Still says calculating on how long it's gonna take and I will be back whenever it's done installing. So unfortunately, I have to reinstall the operating system again because it failed. It leads me to believe that it could be something with the additional printer add-ons and iPod support and things like that. So we will actually be going into options, install Mac OS, customize, and I will be deselecting the additional files here because I failed to do this and it takes up extra space anyways, since language itself is just almost two gigabytes. So we will remove that. We can remove the printer drivers. We'll leave X11, and for additional fonts, we will remove that. Now we can actually try reinstalling again. So hopefully, if everything goes to plan, this will actually reinstall the system, and I'm just going to skip the check this time, so that way it just starts to install. I don't know why it is suddenly not working, because this disk is good, and I have used it on this PowerBook before, so unless I'm doing something completely wrong, 
that is messing up the installation. We might as well just try to repartition the or reformat the drive for Leopard and I guess just try the installation again and this time I will again remove the printer drivers and the additional fonts so I guess we just wait for it to boot back into the pre-installation environment and try again. We are back in the pre-installation environment and I guess now we should just go ahead and try again. So first off we'll go into utilities, disk utility, and just wipe the hard drive if it did somehow put some information onto it. Just so we have a fresh drive to write to. Here is our leopard partition and we'll just erase it and format it again. It is journaled and it should be very quick because there's pretty much nothing on the drive. Alright, so that is done. Now let's go to continue, agree, select our drive. We'll check options again just to make sure. Okay, so we want this option because it's going to install macOS. It's not going to erase everything since we already formatted it. Now let's go to customize and we want to deselect the additional unneeded files such as the language and the font files and we will also skip printer drivers which is somehow 3.4 gigabytes in size. We will keep x11 and now we will go to install. Let's skip the check because why not and hopefully the third or fourth time that I'm doing this now it is actually going to install and the uh, progress bar is actually moving now I will be back if there are any updates if it fails again or if it actually does install so we come back to check and it's failed again for some reason the Oxford Dictionaries package cannot be uh, validated and this is the same error that it had last time and if it comes to a point where the disk is somehow ruined, I do have a super drive we can use with the Mac Mini so we can make another copy of Leopard. But I would prefer to use this retail copy since I know it worked before and now it doesn't want to work. But for now, we just have to keep trying because it's failed. And it's failed again. Seems like we're kind of going in a loop because it's again the Oxford Dictionaries package and it just doesn't want to work and I have no idea why and it also is kind of annoying because it's an official copy of Leopard so it looks like we may have to actually use the super drive with the Mac Mini and create a new Leopard installer because clearly this is not working we do not need to make a Leopard installer just yet because we have these. These are the factory install disks for the PowerBook G4 and it's macOS 10.3.4 which is Panther. With these we should hopefully be able to actually install an operating system onto the PowerBook and then after that we can try to upgrade to Leopard from there. And behind the PowerBook I also got the replacement battery or the additional battery that I have for this. It is the same exact type that is currently on the PowerBook itself. And why don't we actually replace them so that way we can use this one as well. So now that we have access to the bottom part of the PowerBook with the batteries and whatnot, we have the replacement battery. Replacement, it's just an additional battery. This one does light up completely. And this one is currently dead at the moment, but I do know it does hold a charge. And the only difference is that this one has some minor scratches and this one has some small cosmetic damage with a ding right there but the rest of the actual battery is in pretty good condition and I also brought some pretty big coins to test out the unlocking mechanism and this is actually a dollar coin for those who haven't seen it it's not all that common but it is a pretty unique coin to see these are a half dollar coin and the half dollar is actually pretty easy to use with this you don't have to force it that much but with the full dollar coin, it barely fits into the slot. So unless you use this pretty forcefully, you'll have a pretty tough time actually taking the battery out. But it looks cool nonetheless. And now with this battery, we have the fully charged one. And yeah, this one is a bit dirty. But the whole PowerBook does have 
a whole bunch of scratches, unfortunately. And to this one, we can now put it in. Battery replaced. So now we can put this one onto the aluminum stand with all of this aluminum. And we can leave the coins over there. And now we can actually try out the install discs because these should work. I have not tested them. But now, I guess we'll find out together. So the PowerBook is now booting off the first restore disc and now we will be in the Panther pre-installation environment and this time we will format the hard drive again and I will uncheck all of the extra language and printer options so we can increase the speed of the installation and decrease how much space it takes up on the hard drive. So before we actually continue, let's go into Disk Utility, and on Panther, it's actually located within the Installer tab. And I believe there shouldn't be anything on the image, but I will erase it regardless. I will keep it named as Leopard, because we will eventually upgrade to Leopard on this. And it's already done, so let's go back to the Installer, select our Leopard partition, and this time we can go to Options. It will install macOS. We can go to customize and deselect everything that is included with the printers. We can deselect the speech voices, the fonts, the language translations. But I guess we can keep the additional applications. So I will skip the check and now I should just begin installing. I will report back once the installer is complete and we can actually boot into an operating system. So I came back to the PowerBook and it's asking me if I already have a Mac to transfer information and we will just skip this for now since we are not doing that but it does mention FireWire so that's pretty cool and get ready for this transition cube okay so we can do all of these things don't create an ID right now continue and then for this I believe we can we can put in that and then we can do command Q and then skip. Let's go with the cactus since that seems to be pretty common on most macOS versions. And we'll just do leopard since that's what it's eventually going to be. It's probably going to ask for a password, uh, but we will just skip that for now. And now we should actually be booting into Panther. And now we have an operating system on here. And look at the brushed metal, the wonderful interface of Panther. So this is version 10.3.4. So instead of connecting it to the internet and trying to update it that way, we are just going to try the installer again. So I put in the Leopard installation disk and now we can try to install Leopard. And there is no password, so we can just restart immediately. We made it back to the Leopard installer. So now let's actually try for the potentially final time to actually install Leopard again. And we will select this partition so we can upgrade macOS. We will also make sure that it is formatted correctly and customize, make sure to deselect the printer drivers, the additional fonts, we will leave X11. And now we are going to try again and hope that this time it will actually install Leopard. These restored DVDs really came in handy because as you can see, we are on macOS Leopard. Now I only had to use the first one since I believe this one has some extra files. This one had the main OS installation for 10.3 Panther and I was able to use the install retail DVD for Leopard and I was able to upgrade the copy of macOS instead of doing a complete fresh install. So if we go to about this Mac, we have the same system information, 1.33 gigahertz power PC processor, 768 megabytes of RAM, the macOS 10 Leopard startup disk and we are now on 10.5.1. So now with our main copy of Leopard we can update it. I have this connected to a Wi-Fi network and now if we run software update 
it is going to connect with the Apple servers and it's actually going to update everything that we need. So this will update to 10.5.8. It'll have all the latest security patches, Java runtime updates, iTunes, basically everything that it needs since this is 10.5.1 and it will take a while, but now it works. So at least we were able to use this and now all we have to do is just update to 10.5.8 and we also have an iPhoto update and we have iTunes. And before we actually do that, why don't we check out the uh, software that is actually pre-installed. So with iTunes, this is going to be an older version, but let's actually see what version exactly. So this is an older version of iTunes. If I had to guess, it was probably around seven. iTunes seven. So this was really, so 7.5. It's not that far off from iTunes 10. Unfortunately, older versions of iTunes don't exactly work all that well. iTunes 10 still might have a good connection, but we will be updating this anyways. So that's it for iTunes. If we look at iPhoto, and now let's actually see what version of iPhoto this is. So we can check out our .Mac slides because those are definitely current. So this is iPhoto 4, 4.0.1, copyright 2004, and the update is for 4.0.3. So it is still iPhoto 4, and we also have the main update itself. And this has everything that the system needs, and I guess we could try web browsing. So, we will continue. Let's see if Safari will still work. And the page cannot be found because the update information for Leopard is somehow not up. This is a very current version, so how could they not have it? Anyways, let's actually go to apple.com. We could go to .Mac. And this version of Safari still does work. So this is version three. And at the time of this video, Safari 14 is out. Definitely a bit older, but it does still load. And it's not all that bad. It seems to be loading half of the images. The other applications aren't all that exciting, but I guess we could look at QuickTime Player and about QuickTime. So this is version 7.3 for the version and the player. And I guess we can also look at iMovie, create a project. So iMovie is four. And our iLife copy comes with iMovie HD. Before we update Leopard, let's actually take a quick look at the applications. But first off, we are running on battery power. This is the secondary battery, and it is reporting that it has less than an hour of usage but this specific battery hasn't been used in this power book all that much. So as we use it more, it could get a more accurate reading. And it's been at this specific time for several minutes already. So this could increase or decrease as we use it more. And taking a look at the side here first, we have iDisk, which is basically iCloud before iCloud, since this needs a .Mac account. And then we have Expose, which basically just allows you to see the available open windows. We also have front row, which is basically Apple TV first generation ripoff. And it even features the same amount of lag. Then there's also iChat, which is basically iMessage before iMessage, iMovie, iPhoto, Internet Explorer 5.2 for Mac, which is typically not within Leopard, but it was within Panther. And this is actually a program that transferred over but we'll have more support with the built-in version of Safari compared to this version of Internet Explorer, which is from 2001. And even after that, we can get a more up-to-date browser like 10.4 Fox. Then we also have iTunes, Mail, QuickTime, Preview, and Photo Booth, which is hilarious because this doesn't even have a webcam, but you could always connect something like an iSight or just a typical USB webcam. And then we also have Time Machine, which is a very nice thing to have. There isn't really anything installed other than Internet Explorer, really. But that's pretty much it for everything that's pre-installed. And they will receive updates like Safari, iTunes, 
I believe QuickTime Player, iPhoto, those things could all be updated within the bundled update and then iPhoto and iTunes have their own separate updates. And there could also be more updates after this since it could take some updates after these initial ones to actually download those. But at least 10.5.8 is a combined update so that we could immediately upgrade to the last version of Leopard. So if we take a look at about this Mac now, we are on 10.5.8. As of the actual OS, it is fully updated, but as expected, software update does have a bunch of additional updates. So now we have iLife support, Safari 5, Java for Mac OS, airport utility updates, all that good stuff. And now we just have to install these, restart. There may be a whole bunch of other updates after this, but this is part of the process. So now we begin. So we are taking one final look at software update. It is checking for new software, but at this time the Leopard installation is fully up to date. So it will say that we are up to date and we did eventually achieve our goal of trying to install Leopard again on a fresh partition with 10.5.8 and it's fully up to date. Now that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be installing some software on this Leopard installation. So that way we can actually use it a bit more. In the future, we will also take a look at dual booting the machine. We will also make a Tiger installer with this Leopard install. It will be a several episode series, so be sure to stick around for that. If you guys enjoyed the video, then consider subscribing as it really does help out the channel. And if you guys also want to, you can join the Discord and the subreddit with links in the description down below. And thanks for watching.